All right, we are back, aren't we? And uh, we uh, we're here, and we're going to teach, learn something. If Ken had been sick and Mary had stayed sick and Barb had, Jim had to stay home and a couple of people hadn't had gas money, it had been me and Rip Marianne. She ain't got any excuse. She lives around the corner. Unless she's working, I forgot about that, yeah. All right, we begin our service as always by sharing with you the people that write to us from around the world we're on the internet some of you are watching us every sunday morning at 11 sunday night wednesday night at seven and uh we're uh we're also on the internet 24 hours a day all over the world and uh we get letters from people we're on TV across the country, from Los Angeles and San Diego all the way to New York and a whole lot of big cities in between. And down in Texas, all over Texas, we're on TV up in Washington State and in Washington, D.C. as well, and in the Midwest, all these towns. And uh, these are people that write. Vicki Simmons writes to us. Uh, she writes and says, I accidentally caught your telecast one evening and could not believe my ears. Uh, all I can say is you must be a church of Christ. <laughs> well, I'm in the church and I believe in Christ. And uh, your attack on charismatics is ridiculous. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry you're stupid. Ba'ar. Allah goes... You come across as arrogant and judgmental. Well, I'm supposed to judge righteous judgment. I'm trying to read it like she meant it. You talk about gossipers, and you sit there and talk about the way charismatics talk about they get off the platform. That, my friend, is gossip. <laughs> She's very funny, isn't she? Second uh, Timothy 3, 5, read it, because that scripture is talking about people like you. To quote something you said, that stupid Charles Cap. Well, he is stupid. He, he says, Charles Capps is over in Arkansas, and he says, if you say, he's a word of faith, and says, if you say something with your mouth, it'll form your own creation. They're false teachers. And he'll say, if you say, if she does that, I could just die. He says, don't you stay that, and don't you keep saying that, because you'll die. Eventually, you'll die, and, and it'll cause something to happen in your life, and, and you'll die. You turn my stomach the way you talk about other believers. They're not believers, little girl. <laughs> They're false. They're lying false teacher. You, my friend, need deliverance. She's a Pentecostal charismatic because uh, that's one of their phrases, deliverance. <laughs> to me, I think people are funny when they write to me. They're just so ignorant. This is Vicki Simmons. She is so ignorant. Gosh. Now, uh, then Richard Saylor writes to us, and he has a little bit something different to say. Jim, you are a great man of understanding. That doesn't sound like that woman a while ago, does it? <laughs> you have shown through Gematria that man could not have possibly made all these numbers come out as they did. You should listen to my friend's message here. You will get the rest of the story. Make sure you watch all videos. You be totally enlightened. Drop your ego. I don't know what that means. You know the one Billy Graham and the rest of the Pharisees have. I don't know what that means. You know the one Billy Graham and the rest of the Pharisees have. I don't know what that means. Huh? 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 This is drop your ego. You know. The one Billy Graham, okay, and the rest of the Pharisees have. Oh, so I'm like the Pharisees. I've got an ego. No, it's not ego. It's truth, and it's a great passion for the truth. Boy, I'm making some enemies, ain't I? Garland, Texas, Rodney Miller. 
gosh, I just got the thing, and she just got through saying you're a man of great understanding. Well, if I've got understanding, maybe it's not ego. Maybe I understand more than you understand. Right. Maybe it's they are so, listening to you. Yeah, they are. <laughs> this is from Rodney Miller in Garland, Texas. That's outside of Dallas. Hello, all. Hope all is well with you guys. I have several requests for DVD, and I hope I'm not making life difficult for you all. I would like to get all the information on the spirits in prison, the seven weeks of Daniel, the spiritual Sabbath, and the 12 foundations. I know that a lot. that's a lot of information. Please let me know if I can send separate requests. As always, Agape and Flail, Rodney Miller. And then Celise Craig writes from Rhode Island. Uh, greetings. Thanks for the CDs. She means DVDs. I'm wondering if you have information about any group studying truth anywhere in the New England area. Um, got some up in New York, but that's a good way from Rhode Island. Desperate for fellowship among the saints. And then Rodney McCarthy writes from Marysville, Washington. I just found out you have a series called the Revelation Series. Can I download it on the internet? If we had it all on there, you could. If not, could you send me a set? If payment is needed, I can arrange that too. Thank you, Rod. Well, it's about 270 some odd DVDs. You can have them three at a time, special order. All you have to do is we can send you the first three, and then after you get two of those, you call back and say, I'm ready for my next three, and you keep up with the numbers of them. And then Ray Boyd, I talked to Ray. She's down in, in uh, Austin. Please send me 2730, 2722, 2779, and 2726. I saw these on TV and are my favorites. I received 23, 24, 23 and love it, but he could not say all he wanted to say, so I would love to have the subsequent DVDs on Prophecy, 70 Weeks of Daniel. That's about 18 months on the 70 weeks on Sunday morning. I would also like to send someone... I would also like you to send someone else, Joe Paterno, Patrona and Arnold P.A. I'm going to rearrange my current tithe to Operation Blessing. What? I'm going to rearrange my current tithe to Operation Blessing so that I can send some to your ministry because that is where I am being fed. Operation Blessing, Operation Blessing that's Pat Robertson's bunch. That's Charismatics. I'm currently looking for a job and want so badly to get one so that I can be a monthly for sure supporter. So I appreciate your prayers. Grace and peace to you all at Grace and Truth for the Fountain of Living Water. And then Kel McKelton writes, uh, or Kel Turnbull in Tucson. Uh, Dear Pastor Brown, Shalom, greetings to you all. To you and all your flock, I don't have access to a computer, but when I do, I love talking to you. I would like to know phone numbers to everyone who listens to you in Arizona. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Kel, can you please tell me what times you're on the airways in Tucson? Uh, and then Lawrence got, this is a Facebook question. Hello to my family here at Grace and Truth. I've been speaking truth on Facebook to my sister Dawn, this is, this is uh, Lawrence, and a few of her friends sound interested in learning the truth. One asked the question below, and I feel it would be of great help if you could give a brief explanation of the context, definition, and passage in question. Chris Eccles writes, what's your treatment on this passage in James? Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. Sin is finished, it brings forth death. Do not err, my brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom is no verifice, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will beget he us, that we be kind of first fruits of his creatures. Well, the word temptation is the word parosmos. It's the same word in First Peter 4 and 12. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try. God does not tempt us to do evil. He tempts us to do good. The word temptation means to put in the fire. Did he tempt Abraham? Yes. Does he, tempt, does he cause us to be tempted? Does he put the fire in front of us and put us through the fire? Yes, he does. But 
I've had people say, well, I'm out here in my sin. God's predestined to me to be in my sin. That's what he's saying. He doesn't do that. He's causing us, calling us to live righteously and godly. We're predestined to conform to the likeness of Jesus, not predestined to be out there in the depths of sin. I've answered all this in, in messages. Uh, and then uh, John Newell writes, Hello all, hope all is well. The media is really hyping this latest storm, Irene. <clears throat> Has most of the populace around here in a quiet panic? The Northeast is just not used to this sort of weather. Uh, men's hearts failing for fear, looking after those things come on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. I used to think it would take a day or two to empty the shelves at the supermarkets, but from what I've seen today, I can assure you the shelves would be empty in a matter of hours, and that's true, if not minutes. If something really biblical was to happen, if people get this panicky over Category 1 storm, what's going to happen when the real storm comes? Um, these are the beginning of sorrows. We do have to cancel fellowship for Saturday night. God willing, we'll have fellowship on Tuesday night and share some survivor stories. Good night, Irene. Irene, good night. Okay. And then, uh, that's an old song by the, uh, what was their name? The, uh, uh, I can't remember. And then David Roger writes from uh, up in, in uh, it says Houston, but he's not in Houston. He's up in uh, what, Philadelphia, I believe. And uh, oh, this is something on religious freedom. Please see attached from USA Today, August 27, 2011. It says religious freedom under assault. That's interesting, isn't it? It's a big article in here. In Christianity Today, I mean USA Today. Uh, then uh, we got a YouTube comment here uh, through Lawrence's placing it on YouTube. Uh, do you know that when God created you, He imparted to you your own sovereignty? What? God left Adam and Eve to tend the garden and presented them paradise with everything that was wonderful he was told to take dominion over what he had been given and to work it and to extend his family with this wonderful provision he has tested man by giving him a command then let him then left him there to himself with a right to obey or disobey the commandment of God no he didn't no he didn't he couldn't keep from disobeying he, he was in corrupt flesh we all know what happened and in the end the question is this do you ever lose the sovereign right to choose, especially you don't have any sovereign right. Everything is the will of God. When it comes to choosing to obey the gospel, the doctrine of irresistible grace would have us believe that God's grace cannot be resisted. Well, that's exactly right. And he goes on and on. I'm not going to read him. He's ignorant. Uh, and then i got another, another uh, note off of this YouTube. Uh, Glad I found your page, Jim. Praise God Almighty. Arturo. And then I got another YouTube comment. Um, hello again. Thank you for relaying my messages to Jim. It was interesting to suddenly realize Jim was reading my short letter on the show. Da -da 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 -da. That's the show. Anyway, I have a small request for Jim. There's a verse which I would very much like for him to shed some light upon, Daniel 2.43. 2, I wish to know more about the seed of men and why they could not cleave. I understand you are all very busy, and I wish to thank you all again for your kindness. Uh, may God continue to shed his divine favor upon you all. I know you all could use it. Sudiza. I don't have time to go into Daniel right now. Um, and somebody says the fairness doctrine is finally history. And uh, and then, oh goodness, I got so many things here. Uh, I can't read them all. I ain't going to try to read them all.